Hi Bugs, Sam Bug here and welcome back to my channel. So we're starting with chapter 5 and in the last episode we chose Tommy's decision because I thought it was really really important for him to have some family time with his parents. But we're going to see what goes on in chapter 5. So let's get on with it. I'm guessing Linda's going to be in a study, she always is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, explore. Oh, she's painting a bird in a bird cage. That looks really nice. So where is Linda? She wasn't happy on the weekend because she twisted her ankle. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. I'm checking to see if this is a fall down. Okay. So much for a choco. A choker, I wish I hadn't that's done so much said. research to find sites and trails, because now I keep catching myself daydreaming about them instead of working. I still need to get out of the house. I've done the ridge trail probably 15 times now. It hardly seems worth it anymore. Finding new spots is half the point. I guess tomorrow I'll check in town and see if there's a local guidebook or ranger office. Maybe there's something I haven't found yet. Something nearby is still better than nothing. I feel like Linda's one of them people who constantly needs something to keep her going. Closest one's 45 minutes away. Like, she can't just appreciate everything around her and be in the place she is with her family. <clears throat> check sofa, check chamber of commerce, hotel in town, double check. What's that say? T and K trip when Dan gets back. Okay, hmm. nothing there. We'll read his thoughts. I'm gonna let Daddy play with the cool car tonight. Go. That's the same picture all the time. I'm not not quite sure why it's always that same picture. Uh huh. Here we are. Can Davy sleep over? Let me call his mommy. Oh, I think that'd be nice for Tommy to have somebody sleep over. Right, so let's go check for some clues. I'm not sure how many clues it said for Linda. Honey, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last letter, but we've been all over the place. Have you gotten settled into that big house yet? I hope getting away from everything has been a help for you and Dan. I'm writing because, speaking of getting away, your father and I are going to take a road trip. I found some good AA... RP deals and with your father only working part time it wasn't very hard to vintage time off. It's been too long since our last trip. I've always enjoyed change of scenery and as you've hopefully learned it can be just the thing to thing a marriage needs. Lord knows it's helped us. The trip won't take us close enough to the shore to come visit, I'm sorry to say. And if you write back we'll be gone before your letter arrives. We'll call in one of our motels has long distance. But if we don't get a chance to call, send my love to Dan and Thomas. You know your father and I want the best for you all. Love, Mum. That's nice. Linda, read Linda's thoughts to see what she wants. Okay, she, uh, she only wanted one. Ah, oh, I'm guessing that's his friend. Camping. One of three clues for Tommy found. Okay. Wash that ugly sweater mum and dad gave What's me up? so they hey, can see me no wearing it. <laughs> Seems strange. <laughs> Guy, probably not expected to hear from me, were you? You know I'm all about surprises. Look, we're going to head up the coast next weekend. We're doing the drive from LA to Seattle. I, had a, I have an interview up there on Tuesday. And Kelly has a friend who's going to introduce her to some casting people from, Van from Vancouver. Can we crash at your place on the way up? We should be pulling through next Friday. I was thinking we could use it as an excuse to jam on our books. I want to see your new stuff and I have a draft I want you to take a look at. I'm way beyond knowing what's good or not with my work, so I could really use your advice. And you know I'll give it to you straight about your new book. Is there a title yet? Could be an impromptu writer's workshop, I guess. Anyway, I think it'd be fun. Let me know. T. Hey there. They hey. seem to have a lot of friends who care, which is a good thing. Okay, we'll explore Dan's memory. 
I haven't done his yet. It's not that I don't like having fun, it's just there's a rhythm to writing, a routine, muscle memory. Trying to keep notes in a notebook isn't the same as sitting down to a blank page and feeling the silence, knowing that you've got to make that typewriter make some noise. There's certainly something to be said for getting away from your work for a bit, but there's no getting away from the book this late in the game. Only a feeling that you're not working as hard as you should be. There's a busted mailbox on Bypass 66 to prove it. <laughs> I hope he manages to sort his book out, at least. But also dedicate some of his time to his family. You can sleep with us. What about Tommy? What about Tommy? Right, so that's Dan's. I'm guessing... Right, we need to go find clues now. We haven't checked upstairs, so we'll go do that. Tommy doesn't look like he has new... Oh, yeah, there we go. Him and his friend are watching TV. That's a nice picture. It's a nice change from watching... From looking at all the pictures he drew before. We can use the blue sheets to make the sofa fort. Hmm. That's nice. Mm. So, Linda wants to wear a sweater. I'm not sure why that's important. You know, her mum and dad's not here at the moment. I took Tynan up on the book jam. He hasn't seen a word of my new book, and fresh eyes are priceless. He bailed me out on Tramer's way. I hope he understands how much of that book worked because of him. I still remember when we were walking to the pond, and he had the idea about using newspaper clips and police reports. Of course, no matter how many times I tell interviewers it was his idea, they just keep giving me the credit. Maybe they just want the tidy auteur version. Oh well, can't change that. Let's just hope he has an idea for this one too. Freddy can't get here soon enough. I think it'd be nice to have somebody else there to bounce ideas off so him and his friend can figure out Dan's path towards his book. Sometimes somebody else's perspective is very helpful. I talked to Davy's parents and they're okay with him sleeping over. They said they'd take care of Tommy some weekend in return. I know the timing isn't great, but maybe we can work something out. Let's talk when you get up. Lynn. I think that's good. I think having Tommy sleep at one of his friends would be great for Linda and Dan to then find time for themselves. Because even though you have to find time for your children, you also have to find time for you and your partner to like, rekindle your flame. Good news. Mom called today with a change of plans. They made better time on the first leg of the trip than they expected, and they're coming to visit. Bad news. They want to come this weekend. Did Dan tell Tynan they could stay here for sure, or is that still up in the air? I'll ask after dinner. She sounded cheerful enough on the phone, though I can't help wondering if they took this trip because they hit another rough patch. I hope not. I hope they just want to see Tommy and have a classic Mears family feast. Though, maybe seeing how they've ended up will be good perspective for Dan and me. Speaking of which, Dad better not get nosy. I've told him a million times that my marriage is not his business. Maybe I'll try the thing Christine told me. When someone asks you something private, just say, why do you ask? Put it back on them and see if they've actually got a reason to get into your business. Yeah, I've got to remember to try that. We'll see how he answers that one. <laughs> I think that's just what parents do. They say things because they're just looking out for the best for you. Didn't want to bother you while you were working, but didn't want to forget again. But meaning to ask, have you found any ponds on your hike? Creeks? No rush, just curious. Why don't you just ask her? No. Uh, check my fishing poles, maybe we could find a pond. Okay, so we've got Linda who wants a sweater. Tommy who wants to build a fort and then Dan who wants to find fishing poles. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not really sure what to pick for this one. <clears throat> it hasn't been anything that we've really been working up to. Uh, check those fishing poles, maybe we can find a pond, wash that ugly sweater mum and dad gave me so they can see me wearing it. We can use the blue sheet to make a sofa fort. I'm kind of feeling like we should pick Tommy's again, you know, his friend's coming over, he should be able to have fun with his friend because I'm not sure why Linda wants to wear the sweater but it's pretty irrelevant, you know, whether her mum and dad bought it or not, she doesn't need to wear it just because her mum and dad are coming into town. 
and the fishing poles. Maybe we can find a pond. I don't see why that's relevant in the whole story either. So I think I'm just going to go with, with Tommy's. At least him and his friend will have fun and it's great for him. Hey Dad! What's up my man? Haha, <laughs> here it is. Alright, so I'm going to pick, um, yeah, I'm just going to pick Tommy again. It makes more sense at the moment to make sure he's happy. I find that a bit funny. What you should do tomorrow? Dan knew how important it was for Tommy to play with friends his age, so he grabbed the sheet and gave Tommy a few tips on the finer points of structure, engineering, and sofa fork construction. When David came over, the boys stayed up watching TV and eating ice cream for past, far past their bedtime, laughing and playing until they ran out of steam and passed out on the, in the fort. That's good to hear. It's good to hear Tommy having fun. Dan hated missing a chance to get feedback on his book and he found the company distracting. He tried to work through the commotion but he never got into rhythm. He couldn't even focus long enough to do the small corrections so instead he accepted the role of selfish, selfless host and spent the weekend running errands not working. Well I think that's a good thing but that's my opinion. Linda never thought she'd be upset about not wearing the hideous sweater her parents had given her last Christmas but she found herself eyeing it sadly when her mother called and Linda had to break the news she heard a hitch in her mother's voice that worried her. She tried to find out if her parents were okay but her mother made a comment about how much the long distance course call cost and cut the conversation short. I mean she could have wore the sweater still but... So we're on chapter six now. So this is where I'm going to leave this episode. But my thoughts on this episode wasn't that great. And the choices didn't really make much sense to the previous storylines it's been building on. The sweater for Linda and the fact that she was getting upset about it. And I don't understand. You know, she could have wore the sweater as well as Tommy having her fart. So I kind of think, well, they could have put a different option in there for Linda and just let her wear the sweater. I think Dan needed the time away from work. He needed to take a step back. He needed to refresh his memory and give him a chance to bounce ideas off his friend and things like that. But I'm really enjoying this series so far. I like getting to know the characters. I like to see where the story is going and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. There will be another episode up tomorrow, so if you enjoyed this one, give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!